When we talk about funk music, the 1970s were a fantastic time for it, creating some of the best bands and memorable songs. Many rock bands emerged during this period, and you might be curious about the top ones to add to your playlist. The 70s funk bands had catchy beats, soulful singing, and exciting performances, making a huge impact on the music scene and leaving a lasting impression on popular culture. So, if you're looking for some groovy tunes, join us as we delve into 13 famous bands from the 1970s that we want back. Led Zeppelin was a rock band from England that started in London in 1968. The group had four main members, Robert Plant, the singer, Jimmy Page, the guitarist, John Paul Jones, the bassist and keyboardist, and John Bonham, the drummer. They were known for their strong, guitar-focused sound and are considered pioneers of hard rock and heavy metal. Labels, their music was influenced by various styles, including blues and folk. Led Zeppelin had a big impact on the music industry, especially in shaping album-oriented rock and stadium rock. Throughout their career, they received many honors and awards. In 1995, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and in 2006, they entered the UK Music Hall of Fame. The band received accolades, such as an American Music Award in 2005 and the Polar Music Prize in 2006. In 2005, they were honored with a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, and four of their recordings were added to the Grammy Hall of Fame. Their success is also reflected in album sales, with five diamond albums and numerous multi-platinum, platinum, and gold certifications in the United States and the United Kingdom. Rolling Stone recognized Led Zeppelin as the 14th the greatest artist of all time in 2004. As Led Zeppelin's legacy echoes through the halls of rock history, you must be wondering, what other legendary bands emerged from England's musical landscape? Let's delve into the sonic journey of Pink Floyd in our next exploration. Pink Floyd is a famous rock band from England that started in 1965. Pink Floyd, the final cut, a requiem for the post-war dream. All new music from Pink Floyd on Columbia Records and Cassettes. At first, they became known as one of the earliest British psychedelic groups. What set them apart were their long songs, unique sound experiments, deep lyrics, and extravagant live performances. Some people even think of them as the greatest progressive rock band ever. The original members of Pink Floyd were Sid Barrett, who played guitar and lead vocals, Nick Mason for drums, Roger Waters for bass guitar and vocals, and Richard Wright for keyboards and vocals. Under Barrett's leadership, they had two popular songs, Arnold Lane and See Emily Play and a successful first album called The Piper at the Gates of Dawn in 1967. However, due to Sid Barrett's declining mental health, he left in April 1968, and David Gilmour joined the band in December of the same year. Over time, there were conflicts within the band, leading to Richard Wright leaving in 1981 and Roger Waters in 1985. Despite this, David Gilmour and Nick Mason continued as Pink Floyd, and later on, Richard Wright rejoined them. By 2013, Pink Floyd had sold over 250 million records worldwide, making them one of the best-selling music artists ever. Some of their albums, like The Dark Side of the Moon and The Wall, were so influential that they were inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. These albums, along with Wish You Were Here, are among the best-selling albums in history. In both the United States and the United Kingdom, Pink Floyd achieved chart-topping success with several albums. The Eagles are a famous American rock band that started in Los Angeles in 1971. They were a big deal in the 1970s with lots of number one singles and albums. America's greatest band, Eagles, Long Road Out of Eden, only at Walmart. 20 new studio recordings on a specially priced two-CD set for $11.88. They won six Grammy Awards and five American Music Awards. They sold more than 200 million records worldwide and a whopping 100 million in the U.S. alone. That's a lot. The original members were Glenn Frey, Don Henley, Bernie Leadon, and Randy Meisner. Linda Ronstadt got them together, and they played in her band and on her solo album. Later, they decided to make their own music under David Geffen's new Asylum Records label. 
Their album, Their Greatest Hits, is the best-selling album in the United States, selling 38 million copies. It set the stage for their 1976 release, Hotel California, which sold more than 26 million copies in the U.S. and over 32 million worldwide. This album had hit songs like New Kid in Town and Hotel California, which became their only top 10 hit in the United Kingdom. In 1977, Timothy B. Schmidt replaced Randy Meisner. The Eagles' last studio album for a long time was in 1979 called The Long Run. It had the number one song, Heartache Tonight. The band split up in 1980 but got back together in 1994 for Hell Freezes Over, which had live and new studio tracks. They continued to tour and released Long Road Out of Eden in 2007, another number one album. After Glenn Frey passed away in 2016, the Eagles came together again in 2017 with Deacon Frey, Glenn's son, and Vince Gill as lead vocalists. Deacon Frey left in 2022 but returned in 2023 for the band's final tour. Unfortunately, Randy Meisner, one of the founding members, passed away in 2023. As we bid farewell to the iconic Eagles and their unforgettable journey through the world of rock, one can't help but wonder about another legendary group that left an indelible mark on music history. What tales lie within the story of ABBA's rise and fall? ABBA was a famous pop group from Sweden that started in 1972 in Stockholm. The name ABBA comes from the first letters of the members' names, Agnetha Falskog, Bjorn Ulvaeus, Benny Andersson, and Annie Frid Lingstad. They were incredibly successful, becoming one of the most popular music groups ever. So much more to national, so much more than just the many, many things we make for you. From 1974 to 1982, and again from 2016 to 2022 after reuniting, they consistently topped the music charts worldwide. In 1974, ABBA won the Eurovision Song Contest with their song Waterloo, making them Sweden's first winner. The song was later chosen as the best in the contest's history for its 50th anniversary celebration in 2005. During their active years, ABBA had two married couples, Falskog and Ulvius, and Lingstad and Andersson. As they became more famous, their personal lives faced difficulties, leading to the end of both marriages. This change in relationships was reflected in their music, with later songs having darker and more introspective lyrics. After ABBA disbanded in 1982, Anderson and Ulvaeus continued to write successful music for different audiences, including stage, musicals, and movies. Falskog and Lingstad pursued solo careers, ABBA is among the best-selling music artists in history, with estimated worldwide sales ranging from 150 million to 385 million records. Additionally, they secured the position of the third best-selling singles artist in the UK, having sold 11.3 million singles by November 2012. In May 2023, ABBA received the Brit Billion Award for surpassing 1 billion UK streams in their career. They were the first non-English-speaking group to consistently succeed in English-speaking countries' charts, including the UK, Australia, the US, Ireland, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa. ABBA holds the record as the best-selling Swedish band and the best-selling band originating in continental Europe. The famous rock band that started in London in 1967. It was formed by guitarist and singer Peter Green, who brought in drummer Mick Fleetwood, multi-instrumentalist and singer Jeremy Spencer, and bassist Bob Brunning. After their first show, John McVie replaced Brunning and guitarist and singer Danny Kerwin joined in 1968. Christine Perfect, a session musician, later married McVie and officially joined the band in 1970, becoming known as Christine McVie. Initially, Fleetwood Mac focused on British blues music, but their style changed when they achieved a UK number one single in 1968 with the instrumental Albatross. In 1974, Mick Fleetwood discovered Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks, a folk rock duo known as Buckingham Nicks. They joined Fleetwood Mac, marking a shift toward a more pop rock sound. The 1975 album Fleetwood Mac became a huge success, reaching number one in the United States. 
The follow-up album, Rumors, produced multiple hit singles and won the Grammy Award for Album of the Year in 1978. Throughout their career, Fleetwood Mac faced personal challenges, including breakups among band members. Despite these difficulties, they continued to create music together. The lineup changed in the late 1980s and new members were brought in. Over the years, Fleetwood Mac has sold over 120 million records worldwide, making them one of the best-selling brands globally. They received accolades such as being a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1979, induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1998, and the Brit Award for Outstanding Contribution to Music. Despite lineup changes and challenges, Fleetwood Mac's impact on the music world remains significant. As Fleetwood Mac's journey unfolded from their blues roots to global success, their resilience through challenges shone. The Bee Gees, one night only, 24 tracks from 30 years of spectacular music. Yet as we delve into the Bee Gees disco era, do parallels exist in their evolution? The Bee Gees were a music group that started in 1958 with three brothers, Barry, Robin, and Morris Gibb. They became really famous in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Later on, in the mid to late 1970s, they became even more popular during the disco music era. What made the Bee Gees special was the way they sang together. Robin, with his clear and vibrating lead vocals, was a big part of their early hits. In the mid to late 1970s and 1980s, Barry's falsetto singing style became their signature sound. They weren't just performers, they also wrote all of their own songs. Besides making their own hits, they wrote and produced many popular songs for other artists. Because of this, they are considered one of the most important and influential acts in the history of pop music. The Bee Gees were often called different names in the media like the Disco Kings, Britain's first family of harmony, and the Kings of dance music. They sold a huge number of records worldwide, with estimates ranging from 120 million to over 200 million. This makes them one of the best-selling music artists ever and the most successful trio in contemporary music history. In 1997, the Bee Gees were honored by being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The hall's citation mentioned that only a few artists, including Elvis Presley, The Beatles, Michael Jackson, Garth Brooks and Paul McCartney, had outsold the Bee Gees. Black Sabbath was a rock band from England that started in 1968. The members were Tony Iommi for guitar, Bill Ward for drums, Geezer Butler for bass, and Ozzy Osbourne for vocals. People often say they were one of the first heavy metal bands. Their first three albums, Black Sabbath, Paranoid, and Master of Reality, helped shape the heavy metal genre. Ozzy Osbourne left the band in 1979, and after that, the lineup changed a lot, but Tony Iommi stayed with the band the whole time. Before they became Black Sabbath, the band had different names, like the Polka Talk Blues Band and Earth. They picked the name Black Sabbath in 1969. They stood out by singing about scary and mysterious things and playing guitars with a deep sound. They signed with Philips Records in 1969 and released their first single, Evil Woman, in 1970. Their first album, Black Sabbath, came out the next month. Critics didn't like it much, but a lot of people bought it, so they made another one called Paranoid later that year. By 2013, Black Sabbath had sold more than 70 million records worldwide, making them really successful. They were considered one of the top heavy metal bands, along with Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin. MTV called them the greatest metal band of all time, and VH1 ranked them second in the 100 Greatest Artists of Hard Rock list. In 2005, they got into the UK Music Hall of Fame, and in 2006, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They even won two Grammy Awards for Best Metal Performance, and in 2019, they got a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Hi everybody, I'm Johnny Van Zandt. Huey Thomason. Ricky Medlock. Gary Rossington. And we're here at Emerald Studios and uh, just been recording uh, uh, a few things. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Skinner is a rock band from America that started in Jacksonville, Florida. They began in 1964 as My Backyard and had different people in the group until they decided on the name Leonard Skinnerd in 1969. The main members included Ronnie Van Zant as the singer, Gary Rossington and Alan Collins on guitar, Larry Junstrom on bass guitar, and Bob Burns on drums. In 1973, they released their first album. By then, they had a more stable lineup with Leon Wilkerson on bass, 
Billy Powell on keyboards, and Ed King on guitar. The band faced changes in members over the years, like Artemis Pyle replacing Burns in 1974 and Steve Gaines taking over for King in 1976. During the 1970s, they became very famous, especially for their southern rock style in songs like Sweet Home Alabama and Free Bird. However, tragedy struck in 1977 when their plane crashed, killing Ronnie Van Zant, Steve Gaines, and backup singer Cassie Gaines, and injuring the rest of the band. Leonard Skynard reunited in 1987 for a tour with Ronnie's brother, Johnny Van Zant, as the lead singer. They continued making music and performing, even after the deaths of some original members. In 2018, they announced their farewell tour, but kept performing until 2022. Sadly, Gary Rossington, a co-founder, passed away in 2023, leaving no original members in the band. In 2004, Rolling Stone magazine ranked Leonard Skynyrd as the 95th greatest artist of all time. The band was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2006. As of 2023, they have sold over 28 million records in the United States. As Leonard Skinner's journey concludes, their resilience echoes through the years. The Carpenters Love Songs, an exquisite collection of 20 unforgettable hits. What about another musical duo, The Carpenters? What hidden stories lie behind their serene melodies and tragic farewell? The Carpenters were a singing and music-playing pair from America. The siblings were Karen, born in 1950, passed away in 1983, and Richard Carpenter, born in 1946. They had a unique and gentle musical style. Karen sang with a deep voice, while Richard played instruments and worked on arrangements and compositions. They were active for 14 years, making 10 albums, many singles, and doing several TV shows. Originally from New Haven, Connecticut, they moved to Downey, California in 1963. Richard learned piano as a kid and continued studying at California State University, Long Beach. Karen, on the other hand, learned to play the drums. They started performing together in 1965 as a duo and later formed a jazz group called the Richard Carpenter Trio. They also had a band named Spectrum. The duo had a string of successful songs on the American charts, making them top sellers in soft rock, easy listening, and adult contemporary genres. They achieved three number one singles and five number two singles on the Billboard Hot 100, with 15 number one hits on the adult contemporary chart. During the 1970s, constant touring stressed them out. Richard took a break in 1979 due to quaalude addiction, and Karen struggled with anorexia nervosa. Unfortunately, Karen passed away in 1983 from heart failure caused by complications of anorexia, marking the end of their joint career. The public became more aware of eating disorders due to the extensive news coverage. Their music, however, still receives praise, and they remain one of the best-selling music artists worldwide having sold over 100 million records. Credence Clearwater Revival, often called CCR or just Credence, was a famous American rock band from El Cerrito, California. The group was made up of lead singer and songwriter John Fogarty, his brother Tom Fogarty on guitar, Stu Cook on bass, and Doug Clifford on drums. They played together since 1959 under different names before becoming Credence Clearwater Revival in 1967. From 1969 to 1971, CCR had a super successful period with 14 top 10 singles and five top 10 albums in the US. Two of their albums, Green River and Cosmos Factory, even reached number one. They performed at Woodstock in 1969, being the first major act to sign up. Unfortunately, in 1972, after four years of success, the band broke up in a not-so-friendly way. Disagreements over business and artistic control, as well as legal issues, led to lawsuits among the members. Despite this, their music remains popular, with John Fogarty continuing to play CCR songs in his solo performances. Cook and Clifford also formed Credence Clearwater Revisited from 1995 to 2020. CCR's music is still loved and widely played on classic rock radio in the U.S., with 45 million records sold. Their 1976 compilation album, Chronicle the 20 Greatest Hits, is still on the Billboard 200 chart and has been certified diamond for selling over 12 million copies in the U.S. The Carpenters. 
Doors return to Undine in their first East Coast appearance of the year. The Doors were a famous American rock band that started in Los Angeles in 1965. The band had four members. Jim Morrison was the singer, Ray Manzarek played the keyboard, Robbie Krieger played the guitar, and John Densmore was the drummer. They were a big deal in the 1960s, known for Morrison's singing and lyrics and his wild performances on stage. The band got its name from a book by Aldous Huxley and they signed with Elektra Records in 1966. With Morrison, they made six studio albums in five years, like their first album in 1967 and Strange Days in the same year. They were really successful, selling millions of albums and singles. Unfortunately, Morrison passed away in 1971 and the band became a trio until they broke up in 1973. They released more albums in the 70s even though Morrison was no longer with them. After a legal dispute, some of the members tried performing under different names like The Doors of the 21st Century in 2002. The Doors were a big deal in music history, being the first American band to have eight consecutive gold albums. They sold millions of albums worldwide and were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1993. Recognized as one of the greatest bands by magazines like Rolling Stone, as The Doors' legacy echoes through music history, did their influence impact the punk rock scene that emerged later? Find out in the next exploration as we explore The Ramones. The Ramones were a punk rock band from New York City that started in 1974. They played a big role in making punk music popular in the United States and are often considered the first real punk band. Even though they didn't make a lot of money, the Ramones are really important in punk culture. Each member of the band used the last name Ramon, but they weren't actually related. They got the idea from Paul McCartney, who would use the name Paul Ramon when he stayed at hotels. The Ramones performed at 2,263 concerts and toured for 22 years without a break. In 1996, after a tour with the Lollapalooza Music Festival, they had a farewell concert in Los Angeles and broke up. By 2014, all four original members of the band had passed away. Joey Ramone, Dee Dee Ramone, Johnny Ramone, and Tommy Ramone. But the surviving members like CJ Ramone, Marky Ramone, Richie Ramone, and Elvis Ramone are still making music. Over the years, people have recognized how important the Ramones were. They were ranked 26th in Rolling Stone's list of the 100 greatest artists of all time. In 2002, Spin Magazine ranked them the second greatest band ever, just behind the Beatles. The Clash was a famous English rock band that started in London in 1976. They played a big role in the first wave of British punk rock. They were known as the only band that matters and were influential in the post-punk and new wave music that came after punk. The band mixed different music styles like reggae, dub, funk, ska, and rockabilly into their songs. The main members were Joe Strummer as the lead vocalist and rhythm guitarist, Mick Jones as the lead guitarist and vocalist, Paul Simonon as the bassist, and Nicky Topper Hedden as the drummer. Topper Hedden left the band in 1982 because of problems within the group related to his growing heroin addiction. More issues led to Mick Jones leaving the next year. The band continued with new members but finally broke up in early 1986. The Clash became popular in the UK with their first two albums, The Clash and Give Em Enough Rope. Their third album, London Calling, gained success in the United States and was named the best album of the 1980s by Rolling Stone. Their last album, Cut the Crap, came out in 1985 with a new lineup and shortly after, the band split.